Hello everybody, welcome back to my movie review series. Today we'll be discussing Gasoline Alley. Valley, it's Alley. Gasoline Alley from on Hulu. So I just finished watching it. I'm kind of running out of things that are going to jump out at me on Hulu. Um, get waiting for Working Through the Bridge Season 2, which isn't very good. I like the first one, season better. Um, but definitely watch Snowfall, and then maybe I might go back to the Americans, the one about the Russian spies, but that's currently on the menu for the movies and television. Um, I, will, I will see John Wick in theater sometime this week. But regardless, we'll be breaking down Gasoline Alley today. I'll be giving you the typical thing, you know how these go. Again, not that anyone watches these, but I will give you my overall impressions on the grade. I will read the, um, the just the writer, director, advertiser, whatever they said about the movie. Then after that, I'll give you just general impressions on the grade. If you've not seen the movie and like to base or not based on my recommendation, you're going to shop the video. There will be spoiler alerts. We'll be discussing the plot synopsis and character development. Major themes are similar movies, almost certainly not. So overview. Set in the underbelly of Los Angeles, a man is drawn into a high-profile triple murder. The two police detectives on his tail soon join him in attempting to uncover an explosive conspiracy. Directed by Edward Drake. So it had, um, had, the, had a really well-known actor. What was his name? What's his name? Ah, oh, man, it's almost like I have dementia or something. Oh, that's right, it's Bruce Willis. He's in this movie, but 3.2 out of 10 on Film Infinity, whatever the fuck that is. 35% on Rotten Tomatoes and 3.8.10 on IMBD, and 51% liked it on Google. So as we've noticed, Google typically has the highest ratings. Now, I'm gonna have to join the chorus on this one. This one, this is pretty bad. This is pretty, pretty, well, I wouldn't say it's off-putting, but I'm gonna give it a C minus at the, the lower end of just what what is this. But, and it's a thriller action, kind of more of like a, like a conspiracy detective uncovering what happened as opposed to just like a action thriller or something. But the characterizations were pretty pretty blah, and the ending the ending kind of fight scenes I just thought was completely unbelievable in terms of like just writing or even entertainment value. But I'm not a stickler on movies where it's like it can be completely unrealistic as long as it's entertaining or there's something about the writing that's intriguing or thought provoking to any extent. This one had nothing nothing novel to it. Um, the actual tone like it had a little ominous eerie production tone to it, which I kind of enjoyed. But there was just nothing to the characterizations and nothing to the plot development that was interesting. Or, or even really that believable, or at least to get into it for entertainment value. So if you've not watched the movie and would like to watch it based on that, you're going to want to shut off this video now. So you open up and you meet Jimmy Jane. He's kind of, they had, they had a different, there was a different like, um, uh, like overview on, on Hulu. I don't have that written down. But he, we, they classified him as like a hard-headed, bright, something that word didn't make any sense. He was just like a rough and tumble guy. He was in jail for a little bit. You don't really learn that until later. But he's basically just at this bar um, and, a, and an escort approaches him. Her name is Star. And she's like, you know, what's the, what's the three words that kills a man? And you go, is it in? And she basically pitches her, her rates for the for the escort services. And uh, the, it kind of really just cuts off there. So five, a couple minutes talking between Jimmy and Star, and then bam, the next scene is the triple murder. So Star is dead, is now dead, um, and two or three other um, escorts are also dead as well. So you meet Detective Freeman and Detective Vargas. Jimmy is in his, he's a tattoo person. So he's a tattoo artist. So he's in his shop doing some tattoo, about to put some, uh, about to put, tattoo some names onto some titty and Detective Freeman and Vargas come in. Detective Freeman is play, played by Bruce Willis. Detective Vargas is played by somebody I didn't, didn't recognize before. But basically Vargas is the, the rambunctious, outgoing, bombastic characterization and Detective Freeman's kind of laid back. Does, it really doesn't have much many, many lines through the, uh, throughout the movie. Not sure if you can remember them. But regardless, they uh, they question Jimmy Jane and he's you don't really get it as the viewer you're not really sure if he's guilty you're not he's not really defending himself you're just not really sure where, where it's gonna go at the very beginning so he kind of like meets up he has this he is a friend or somebody that he did time with in jail that I believe the character is Dennis Bork but whoever the guy is that there's like a the main 
there you have the detectives, you have Jimmy Jane, the tattoo artist, um, and then you have this, this, you'll learn about Percy Malini later, but just kind of like this party house, as well as just this, this film director dude, or actor. So I think Dennis Bork is the actor, regardless of like this, they're filming, I don't know, a, a daytime TV show, we're all kind of like making fun of it, like it's not a good show, but it pays the bills, whatever. So Jimmy, Jimmy's talking with Dennis, um, from there, he, I, I don't know, he's, I think he's getting some information just about either Detective Freeman, Detective Vargas, what he knows about Percy Malini. I think, I think that's initially when you heard the name Percy Malini. But regardless, you meet somebody else that's on Dennis's cast or crew, and his name is Roy. Um, so they go back and forth. Roy also seems to be like an ex-criminal or a, a convict of some sort. Jimmy Jane's a convict. Dennis Vargas is, you know, goofy, goofy, pussy, uh actor. And so Jimmy Jane's leaving the, he leaves the um, movie set after get, trying to get some information and a Range Rover pulls up next to him and shoots at him. And so someone's trying to kill Jimmy and he kind of like, you kind of, we have a drive scene, he drives away and, and they kind of like, they play chicken in this like dirt yard and Jimmy Jane gets away. Then he calls Roy up and he's like, you know, you seem like a guy that can provide some protection. So he buys a gun off of Roy. And so, after again, pretty quickly, I would say again, the movie's only an hour and a half, but probably about a third of the way through, and Detective Freeman and Vargas work together under Captain Lou, but basically, um, Jimmy, again, after like, the first initial scene, you can tell Jimmy's trying to be like the vigil anti-detective himself, kind of figure stuff out, as the characterization to realize he's, he's not guilty, but he's going around to different places trying to figure things out. Detective Freeman and Vargas are doing the same thing, and so he learns, he has another, Jimmy has another scene where he like meets this old, like another cop friend where he gets some sort of name or an address or something, and then he approaches this, this woman who's like the, the, the daughter of a preacher or something, but she's a singer, her name is Eleanor Rogers, and they, they have an extended scene of just like talking with, between her and Jimmy, kind of like friends or whatever. And then she kind of goes back and takes down Jimmy Jimmy's um, number. But regardless, the reason Jimmy is part of the it, well, the reason he's the only suspect in this triple murder is because they found a lighter. His his, his uh, brand or his tattoo shop is called Gasoline Alley, so hence the title of the movie. But they found a lighter with his fingerprints on it at the scene of this triple murder. And so, for regardless, he gets this name. He has the interaction with Eleanor as as well as with his other cop friend. And he gets the name of Percy Malini as well as the address and that they're having this party where a lot of cops have been going to. This is kind of like the, the party house aspect of, of the characterizations. And so he goes there. Jimmy Jane says, you know, he's part of, he, he meets the Kaiser, the bouncer, and he's like, you know, I'm, I'm a cop, let me in. My badge is in the car. I think it's a popular spot for cops to hang out. And so Kaiser lets him in the party. Jimmy Jane confronts Percy Malini. About about knowing Star, and again, here's another line where it's like, if you forget my name, just look up at the ceiling. So Percy Malini knows the, is it in three words to make a man's ego go away? Is it in yet? And then to look up the, at the sky if you forget my name. So he, he learns, he gets both of that, and he kind of like, Percy Malini's kind of, you know, wasted or partying, trying to tell a story to his friends, and Jimmy Jane's there to get information. And so he kind of confirms to himself that Percy Malini is... Um, new star as well, and so he's not really he's not sure who's behind it all yet. But regardless, he goes back to his his the Dennis Bork dude, the the actor or whatever, and he gets some more information about that. Because I think he sees Dennis there with some chicks, so he's like, you know, J Jimmy's just trying to figure out who's who in this organization. And he saw his old friend there when he went to the party to confront the people. And then as he's leaving the party, um, Kaiser the bouncer kind of pulls him aside and like. Tells him about this dude named Erasmus, as well as like you know some of the cops might be involved as well. Probably about halfway through the movie, Detective Vargas is pretty on the fence of whether De Detective Freeman or any of the cops are involved. And as the mov movie progresses, they get more convinced. And so the next day, right after Kaiser tells Jimmy this thing, um, Jimmy goes to his car and sees like blood dripping out of his trunk. Opens the trunk and um, Kaiser is dead in the back of it. And so he drives it, literally goes to the police detectives and I'm like, look, someone's clearly setting me up. At which point Detective Vargas was like, yeah, I definitely don't think you're involved, Jimmy. 
and Detective Freeman really doesn't say much throughout the throughout the movie. But regardless, you also learn about Detective Flosso, who might also be in on the on the ring. And so basically Jimmy confronts Dennis Fork, and then Dennis Fork tells him, you know, if you really want to get to the bottom of it, you have to know find a guy named Erasmus. Well, in addition to Kaiser being dead, Percy Molini is also killed at the same time. Percy's neck is snapped, Kaiser is killed and put in the back of Jimmy's car. And so, you know, Jimmy goes back to the to this, again, like it's like a big house or office building, it's a big, big facility, and there's a like police tape up and he just goes back there anyway and basically beats up, tortures Erasmus a little bit to get the, they call him the, like a, uh, the cop with a bunch of silver hair or whatever, which I'm pretty sure is Detective Flosso. But regardless, he gets the information out of him, and right as he's doing that, he gets a call from um, Eleanor Rogers, the, the same chick, and basically, she's basically like outside his tattoo shop, like, hey, I'm here, I got a text from you, and he's like, I didn't text you, get out of there, and again, you see somebody kidnap her without seeing who, who's kidnapping her. And so she gets taken, um, at that which point, Jimmy and Detective Vargas both de de definitively learn Detective Freeman is in on the Basically what's happening is I guess the police officers were running some drugs or guns or people, just some sort of your typical uh, drug syndicate uh, services. <laughs> and so it's really just, that's real the plot is just the police, uh, corrupt police officers. So it's again, a thousand times over her in this story. Um, but regardless, Jimmy and Detective Vargas are on the same kind of team. They go, he goes back to his uh, tattoo shop, fights it out with Detective Flosso, beats him up a bit. Gets him in the back of the of the police car. Again, Jimmy Jimmy Jane is not a police officer, but they're canvassing the scene, and Jimmy gets into the front of the police car and it's like Detective Flosso, you're gonna tell me like we you know where are they going, where did they take Eleanor? Because she got just got kidnapped right outside the shop. So it's like, okay, I'll take you to where where he go, where they are, where this tunnel is. They have a tunnel from San Diego or Los Angeles somewhere to Tijuana. And so Detective Flosso gives them the directions, they get there pretty quickly. And Detective Floss is like, you're gonna let me go, right? And Jimmy's like, yep. At which point he murders Detective Floss by caving his skull in with the car door. So the, the the characterization was really strange to me of going from just someone someone who get he, Jimmy had spent like five years in jail for like uh, the felony assault. And so the characterization of going from just trying to clear your name, which is rather believable, and I thought the tone of the movie was all right. To just being this vigilante bad guy just slaughtering people, I just thought it was just like out of left field. Like, when did Jimmy Jane become this guy? But regardless, I didn't think it worked well as a plot. Again, any just to me, any inter, any any entertainment value or any writing just makes me think well, it gets a good grade. But if it's just nothingness, and this one felt like nothing to me. And so regardless, he goes out to this cooler, like literally just like a standard uh, garage uh, freezer, and it's got a tunnel down into Mexico. And so, Detective Freeman, um, there was one other guy um, that played a minor role. Maybe it was Dr. Feelgood or something. Another big black dude. So they go down there, Bruce Willis character, and this black dude, and they're escorting this chick, Eleanor Rogers, to you know be human trafficked and get their pay. And so, Jimmy Jane goes down there. He takes out you know, a six-shooter. He takes out one dude, picks up his machine gun. These guys are heavily armed. He takes out like five or six dudes. And so, and then he calls out, um, he calls out, and Detective Vargas gets on the scene, but he's a little later, and so Jimmy Jane uh, is in the, after killing like six or seven of like their bodyguards, in this bigger warehouse area, and then you have Detective Freeman, Dr. Feelgood, and Eleanor Rogers, who's all drugged up, getting ready for transport. And so at this point, Jimmy Jane has just become the most badass shooter in all known of uh, cinema, and so he's smoking a cigarette, um, you know, they're firing on him with automatic weapons. He's still got his six-shooter. You know, he sprayed the clip of the of whatever, the Mac or whatever automatic gun they had. And then and then just, like, casually smoking a cigarette behind this, you know, crates. And there's bullets flying through. And he just, oh, you know, stand, waits for the brakes. And the shooting stands up one shot, kills a dude. Another kills Dr. Fieldman with two shots. Hits Detective Freeman, wounds him. And then he's out of bullets. And so again, it's just the, the fight scene to me was just was just extremely unbelievable, and the characterization of going from a guy trying to clear your name to just mowing down people and trying to rescue someone just just didn't work for me. And so, um, regardless, Detective Vargas gets on the scene. He had, he kills one or two dudes, another bodyguard. Seemed like the, this tunnel was pretty pretty active. <laughs> 
<laughs> but regardless, he's like, you know, Detective Vargas and Jimmy Jane are, are helping Eleanor Rogers out, you know, arms around the shoulder, she's all drugged up. And Detective Vargas is like, you know, well, what's up with Detective Friedman? And Jimmy Jane says he's going to need a new, um, need a new uh, godfather for his kid. Because I guess Detective Friedman was the godfather for Detective Vargas' kid. And so, well, even before this, before this, um, before they get down there, Detective Friedman um, kills Captain Lou, the captain of their police station, because right as he's leaving to go transport this chick, uh, Vargas calls Captain Lou and is like, you gotta arrest Freeman, he's the dirty one. And so, that's the end of the, the action, um, but again, just not really believable with Jimmy Jane's character at all, because he'd certainly be arrested for a lot of those things. But anyway, there's one final scene where it's like, the very first scene when Jimmy is talking with Star, then you, you, you see that scene again, but it's played out in full, and you basically you just see that Jimmy Jane had offered Star a like a receptionist position to work as a, as opposed to an escort, and so that's why he, he had she had her lighter, and Detective Freeman just saw it as an easy easy mark to pin Jimmy for the triple homicide, and I guess they, the reason they killed the girls was just because they these weren't good prostitutes, so it just moving inventory is what they called it. And so you see the final scene of Jimmy giving Star his lighter. It's like, be here tomorrow and you have a job so you don't have to be an escort. And so overall, again, it just did nothing to me. At the very beginning, up until about like the, fi the final action scenes, but in the, in the, in the uh, characterization of Jimmy just, just threw it for me. Again, not off-putting, but just did, did nothing for me in terms of entertainment. Nothing new in the, in the writing. And uh, yeah, it's really, really about it. So C minus lower end of just didn't do much for me. So that was what I have for you today. Thank you for watching my review of Gasoline Alley, and I'll see you on the next one.